everybody. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. I'm Jeff Antoniak. Well, this week we're going to do another throwback video. I am in my second session of Maryland Summer Jazz. I'm the artistic director of Maryland Summer Jazz. All last week, it was a fantastic online virtual jazz camp we did. We're in our second week right now, so that's why I'm not uh, with you doing a video. But if you're seeing this on Friday, the day this video is released, there's one day of Maryland Summer Jazz left on Saturday, July 25th. Who's our super special guest? Jeff Coffin from the Dave Matthews Band. We could probably get you in. If you send us an email like the second you see this, uh, send it to the address below, Digging Deeper Jazz. Um, we may be able to get you into that one last day of Maryland Summer Jazz. You can study, do master classes, electives, hang out with Jeff Coffin virtually online from wherever you are. So check that out. Now the video that we're doing a throwback on is so important, I want you to see it again. If you missed it the first time around, this is a big deal. Sorta, kinda, diatonic. This is how every one of your heroes plays at least part of the time. And it's in between approaches. It's that in between part that's the sweet spot. I want you to check it out. Have a good time. Hey everybody. Jeff Antoniak, welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. So this week, I want to talk about playing sorta, kinda diatonic. That's the technical term for what we're gonna talk about. So now, before we jump in, um, two sort of big announcements. Um, one is we have a Jazz Wire giveaway going on. We're gonna be doing the drawing on, I think it's Friday, April 3rd, whatever that Friday is that week. Uh, we're gonna be doing a drawing. I'm gonna tell you more about it. I would love for you to enter and win an opportunity to join Jazzwire. Uh, most importantly, the world is upside down right now. So I hope six months or a year from now, somebody is watching this video and they're thinking back to like, oh, that's right, that crazy coronavirus thing. Well, right now, I wish I could say we're in the middle of it. I fear that we're at the beginning of it. Um, things are crazy, people are scared, people are anxious. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a terrible time and you know, I'm looking forward to humanity pulling together and figuring this one out. We're here to talk about music. And so all I know is that tonight on earth, there are no jam sessions. There are no community band practices. No one's getting together in someone's garage and playing some real book tunes. It's not happening, it's not. And if it's happening tonight, it probably won't be in two nights from now. So um, it's a terrible time and musicians are displaced and especially the adult amateurs and semi-pros that I love talking to. I know that this is what sort of, this is what keeps a lot of us going. We have our families, we have our careers, but this is the thing that we love to do and now it's been taken away, right? So uh, keep tuning in to Digging Deeper Jazz. I have some new ideas coming up for you guys that I'll be announcing in a week or two. We have the Jazz Wire giveaway and if you don't want, want to wait for that, Jazz Wire is happening and cranking and there are people there doing the work that you used to do in the real world. I hope you'll consider joining us. Okay, let's talk about sorta, kinda, diatonic. Um, many of the greatest players nail the chord changes, right? So we've talked plenty about that, how to get inside the chords in an intricate way, the way Charlie Parker did, or the way Clifford Brown did, or, or the way Oscar Peterson did. We can name all these names of people who were so beautifully inside the chord changes. Johann Sebastian Bach, also pretty good with the chord changes. Okay, so, um, but there's also this way to, to do things that are over the chord changes. And we may say that it is a more melodic approach. So now today I'm talking about sort of kind of. So I wanna show you a fantastic device, a lick. I associate with Sonny Stitt, but I know Charlie Parker before him used it. And I know Coltrane after him and so many people. So I wanna sort of show you this lick. It's a great lick. Yeah, you can learn it and play the lick, but I want you to understand this bigger concept. Always with the Digging Deeper videos, there's you know sort of a bigger concept concept aside from me just giving you the lick of the week. To me, that's not very interesting. So um, let me now play the lick of the week for you so you can hear what we're talking about. That is a pretty great eighth note run. And as I said, I relate that to Sonny Stitt. And now I'm calling it sort of kind of diatonic because 
it's not really linked to a particular set of chord changes, yet it is so clearly related to the key of C. If you look at it, you can see I put a little V above the chord tones. And what are the chord tones? A C triad, right? So all the way through this thing, you can see that I marked, it turns out I only marked half of them. I, I marked the arrivals, which is notes from a C triad, a C, E, and a G. But the departure notes, the lowest note in every four note grouping is also a chord tone. So it turns out that in every measure, four eighths of uh, those notes are chord tones. And four eighths, that's a big percentage. That's like 30 or 40 percent, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, yeah, this is extremely diatonic, right? It's, it's sort of in the key of C, but it's extremely not diatonic because there's all these notes that do not belong in the key of C. D sharps don't belong in the key of C. F sharps don't belong in the key of C, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this is such a cool sound. So it's very much pointing at C. And that's what those chromatic notes are doing. Why do those chromatic notes work? When you play chromatic notes, they don't sound like this, right? I remember that as a young guy seeing, oh, Coltrane played an F sharp on a C chord. I'm gonna do that. And I'd play it and it would sound wrong. Like, that's uncool. Why is it cool when he plays, but not, right? Well, of course, it's the context, it's the intention and all that. So what is the context of these quote unquote wrong notes? What is the context? Yeah, well, that's sort of what's baked into this lick. But now, where are you gonna use this thing? How often do we have four measures of a C triad to improvise over? The answer, not so much, right? Well, so here's where this thing gets incredible is the different places we can use it. Now, before we get there, I wanna talk about this Jazzwire giveaway. So what we're doing is giving away a six month subscription, that's our minimum subscription, a six month subscription. So you get the free um, registration and then six month subscription, that's 375 bucks typically. And so what you get is a playing evaluation from me. You send in a couple of recordings, playing evaluation from me, a 10 or 12 page practice plan from me. Now this is open to all instruments. We have all instruments on Jazzwire. It's not a saxophone website. And as I said, the drawing is gonna be done on April 3rd and it's gonna be a random drawing. We're gonna pick um, anybody, any instrument can win this thing. And we've got a lot of entries already. I want you to enter. So here's all I need for you to send in. Send it in by April 1st. Your full name, email address. I'll have that from your email. Your instrument, the city and country you live in, and just a little bit about your personal goals for studying jazz. I wanna see those entries, keep them coming in, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun to see uh, who gets this opportunity. Okay, let's continue on with uh, this lick now. So if you look at the sheet and you look at item number two, what I did is put this lick over rhythm changes, the one, six, two, five progression the first four measures of rhythm changes. It could have been the second four measure of rhythm changes for all that matters. So this lick fits so perfectly. Now you're gonna see there are some notes that you would not think should fit so well over some of these chords. And yeah, that is a little bit true. Not all of them are the most opportune notes. In the second measure on beat three, we see a C natural right smack on a G7. Not a good note. I would not choose to play that note in this context. But here's the thing. I think you're gonna hear that it sounds pretty good. So what do you think? Did that sound pretty bad? It did not sound pretty bad, it sounded pretty great. And so some of those weird note choices, they worked. Why, do, why would that be? Why would that be? Well, so I was not thinking about any of those chords. So I was not addressing the chord changes like I so often am asking you to do inside Jazzwire. That's a big assignment a lot of the time, nail these chords. So this is an approach that is sort of kind of diatonic. So what it is, is these changes are in the key of C, more or less. This lick is in the key of C, more or less. And so here's the thing, those chords in the key of C have a real logic to them and they sound nice to our ears. Well, this melody has a real logic. It's related in some ways, but not related in other ways. But the logic of the melody, it is so strong. This pattern is so strong. 
the way I'm you know, alternating black and white tiles on a floor. The pattern is so strong that we don't, you know, there's no question about which tile should go where next. It's so clear to us, right? So yeah, that's kind of what's going on here. So let me do this. I'm gonna loop the first A section. So there's extra chords that happen after this if you know rhythm changes. I'm gonna keep doing this lick over a couple uh, a sections of rhythm changes. And now, of course, I run out of saxophone at some point. I can only play so high and so low. So I'll just start readjusting or playing up and down through this pattern, but I'm only using this pattern the whole way through. Check it out. Right? Who's your new best friend? Yeah, I'm your new best friend, right? That is an amazing lick. And sure, there's some technique to it and there's some chromatic intricacy and this and that. Yeah, it's going to take a little practice. Man, that sucker sounds good. So yes, this is an amazing thing to learn. It's sort of kind of diatonic. So you see what I'm getting at? I'm not addressing all of these chord changes. I'm doing something over top, but yet it sounds so nicely connected to it. So, so many of our heroes had this ability to be inside the chord changes, then had the ability to play just something beautiful and melodic like Cole Porter, a melody that Cole Porter might write. And then to me, this is an in-between thing where this is now related to the key area, has some nice bebop intricacies, chromaticism, leading tones. Uh, but it's kind of its own thing. And uh, this is something that I missed in my development um, that I'm actually spending a lot of time sort of getting now. These classic, beautiful melodies like this that Sonny Stitt or Dexter Gordon or somebody might play, that they were kind of diatonic, but not really. They were with the chords, but not nailing the chords. Really, really good stuff. So the last example I want to play for you here is over a different set of chord changes. It's really the same chords, but slowed down. So these are the first four uh, measures of Have You Met Miss Jones. So it is a different set of chords. And the thing is, I could put 10 other sets of chords here that this thing sounds good over. So just another example of a song that you may play or you may know of, and you can hear what this sounds like. Check it out. All right, I want to see this term trending across the internet, sort of kind of diatonic. I invented that, maybe, I don't know. All right, well, I want to turn you loose on this. As I said, it's a cool, for, for a lot of us, it'll be sort of a cool technical challenge, perhaps, certainly to get it into all 12 keys, but we don't have to start there. Start in one or two keys, get this under your fingers, and then just this overriding concept that we can be really, really playing some great intricate bebop that doesn't have to be with chord tones and thirds and sevenths necessarily. Now we do want to learn that, but this is a great way to go. So please enter the Jazz Wire competition. I would love to have you be the person that we welcome in. And then for everybody else, yes, spread the word about Jazzwire. It's a, it's a scary and terrible time for musicians around the world. And you know, I know people are hurting. Um, at this point, and um, there's so much good work that goes on inside Jazzwire that now is a great time to be welcoming people in. So please share what we're doing with other musicians you know who may be displaced, who don't have an opportunity to learn or to play or to share this music. I appreciate that. All right, have a great week. Music